All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to look at my G1 climb this season. We're in season 10. Um, and in terms of where I'm at, I know that this total is not enough to hold G1 at the end of the season, but you know, we're within a few weeks of the season end, probably the end, the end of September. So I felt like this was a significant um, climb where we actually moved up through the ranks fairly uh, well. And I wanted to kind of share my strategy and what I did. So I got a video here of all the matches in a row. We're going to take a look and I'm going to try to keep track of the win loss count because I feel like it was better than usual. Like my, my average for the season is 54%, which is what it was last season. Um, but I think my, my win loss is much better this season. So we've got our first match here. <clears throat> I'm bringing the single target cleave this season. I started it during special league last special league and it was just quick and fun and painless and so i decided to push into regular rta with it and it does pretty well i mean there's several counters um this was actually an interesting match going second which is pretty rare but he wasn't speed tuned to follow it all up so i was able to do what i do <clears throat> so you'll see you know you kill two and then you move on from there so that's the whole that's the whole strategy of this team it doesn't it often goes four two and then three two because Kali is not a unit that can survive. But she's really great at neutralizing whatever you want. I haven't really played around with using her to attack buff and go invincible. Maybe I should, but I haven't done that in the in the past. So alright, so we're one and oh. So we started at 1861 G3. Pretty pretty so or G3. <laughs> C three. Pretty solidly C three. Got our next match here. So this one I actually play more meta. I don't know why. That was sort of a weird impulse. And then I went really strange. So I'm going to pause it here to talk about the pick ban. So this is my theory. Um, Vanessa is a pretty good counter to cleave, to any cleave really, because it's a speed lead. So they threaten you on speed, which cleaves generally want to cleave first. Um, she has an auto revive. So whatever you kill, you got to kill it twice, which slows you down. You don't want to be slowed down. You want to kill as many things as you can fast. So I saw the Vanessa and I guess I was like, whatever, let's play, uh, let's play meta. Um, so I went with Fran Hathor, which is pretty standard, like SWC uh, counter pick. They went Gianna Gany, which I think is correct. Gany, when you see Hathor, you can't let them have both. So they split that up. And Gianna is a universal always pick because she has no weaknesses in terms of matchups. Um, and then I went with Sierra Draco. I was, I don't know exactly what I was thinking. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll threaten speed lead because like, you got you got to threaten speed, I guess. And then the Draco would be immunity. They followed with Daphnis and Bastet, so they kind of went cleave, interestingly. And then I went Triana, which I don't know if that was a good pick or not. But I ba I banned the Vanessa because I want to go first, and they banned my immunity. So kind of lucked out a little bit that they didn't have that I didn't have will and everything, so I wasn't able to get just totally nuked. Nice little violent proc by Fran as well. <clears throat> so this is actually a real back and forth, taking lots of turns kind of a match. They hellfire the Triana, and she's gone. I think this this has got to be a loss. I'm down, super down real quick, but we'll see. We proc, so we luck into a proc on the Hathor, get a full sleep. Oh yeah, and then we can start, we can start getting to work. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, 1.5. So it's three on four, but really in terms of turns, I'm gonna be taking more turns than them um, for the little bit anyway, while people are sleeping. Missed the bomb there, so some of the luck's coming back. Sleep the Gianna again, cause no thank you. That thing just blows up. So now we're feeling really nice cause his main damage dealer's gone. We get our immunity up again. I guess I went Draco for the double immunity. That was my initial thought. Sleep again, probably due to some nice procs, making the cooldown a little bit better. And she's gone and we're good. So we do win this one. I, I had forgotten about that. So that's kind of nice, but it's not what I normally play. But I have it built. I have a fairly okay Gany Hathor or whatever built because, um, you know, that's what you do. And it's good. They're good everywhere in Guild Wars and stuff like that. So, all right, next match. So now we're 2-0, 2-0. Oh, and oh. This is against uh, those characters. I know what's that not nah and mm, I think I don't know. Um, but this is this is the five that I want to run almost always if I can. Um, I usually don't pick Bastet first. I guess I was playing around with. It. I like to pick Sierra because then I can challenge speed and it kind of forces them to you know react to the speed or react to what they think might be control because Sierra runs with Ganey Hathor quite a bit as well. Uh, they run double panda, so you know they're trying to just bruiser it out. Then I go with double wind with the Sierra and the Odin, which I think is a solid pick. The, I mean, double wind into that is fine. And then they go Racky Fran. I finish up with Megan and Kali. Odin's banned. 
So we buff up. We Toad Poison. That's the way that this team works. If Sierra is going to function as one of your damage dealers, you have to bring the Megan. Every time I don't get Sierra and Megan together, I'm pretty weak um, because I don't have that effects removal right before she takes a turn. Now Sierra is a, a decent damage dealer. She can land a bomb. She can kill stuff. Kali, of course, laughs at Fenyang. And then Sierra kills Reki. So it worked out just right. So we're 3-0. Oh. As we climb. We're still at time and a half. I'll pause it whenever we needed. So I see with the Fran Oki pick, he's challenging speed. And so I'll pause it at the draft. I will pause it at the ban. So one of the little variants on this team is when the opponent wants to fight for speed. So <clears throat> Fran Oki is a very fast counter to a Sierra because Fran has a speed lead. It's not a lot, but it's enough. Um, my best stat's really fast. So I'm comfortable with that as a counter reply. The Kali is going to kill anything on the other team if it goes first. Um, him responding with the cowgirl Vanessa is a real problem. Now he's got double speed lead. He's got revive. So I go, okay, we're going to fight for speed. And I'm going to win, right? I'm going to have double speed lead, double boost. So I go Draco and Garrow. So I'm, I know I'm winning speed, which is great. I don't know if I'm winning the match, but I know I'm winning speed. They follow up with a Hathor, which for my comp is basically useless. I don't really have uh, much issue with Hathor because I just kill it, right? So we'll see. We'll see if that actually turns out to be the case. We buff up. We kill something. In this case, it's Hathor. We miss the stun. We blow up the Lauren because Lauren's evil, and then this guy just leaves. So that worked great. I didn't even have to prove that I could uh, I could go through it because he, he knew he was done. So we're 4-0. All right, we got a G1. We're getting close to G1. I was sort of surprised how low G1 was at 1901. Like, I knew getting over 1900 was usually a hurdle, and it's it's a tricky spot because the way points work at that uh, cutoff. But G1 being 1926, I was like, oh, I'm close enough. I should maybe push. So a little bit of a variant here. He opens Vanessa. I I apparently am cool with fighting it with Sierra Bastet. Um, he goes, Okie Gany, two fast units. I say, okay, I'm not going to mess with this. You've already got the best speed lead, and you're showing speed, so I'm going to contest speed. So I go Garo and Draco. He goes Blue Monkey and Tiana, and I go Covenant, which is new. Um, Covenant. He's not, he's not skilled up or anything like that, so that's a bit of a bummer. Um, but he's still great. He still hits for a ton. So I bring him in certain situations. I ban out the Vanessa. Of course, he bans out the Covenant, which I think is wise. And here we go. I go first. Happy times. The thing I do here every time is pause. Every time I bring Draco, I check the buffs. Sierra got attack buff. Garo got speed buff, which is good. But I would like Garo to have attack buff. Now I have to choose. You know, normally I might defense break for Garrow here if Garrow has the attack buff it's a one in three chance he doesn't so I'm gonna buff attack as well give him attack and speed so that's that's the thought there we missed the stun this is a real issue watch this look at that Oki doesn't die most of the time that Oki should die um in hindsight I probably should have bombed the Tiana I guess because I knew if Oki didn't die he was getting cleansed I didn't really worry about him not dying, but I clearly should have. That's a tanky Oki, probably not accuracy slot six. Okies are usually good targets to snipe because they usually have to have accuracy. Um, sometimes people get really greedy and do crit damage, so I felt pretty comfortable bombing him, but I was clearly incorrect. We get almost a full, uh, full stun. That water monkey is a huge problem for my Garrow, and I probably didn't accurately uh, recognize what a problem it was going to be going into the draft. <clears throat> I mean, I, I could have banned the water monkey and gone second i don't think that's the best idea for my comp but eh, i don't know i might have still been able to go against finessa tiana versus uh sierra draco so this is a loss right this looks like a loss so this is four and one is where we're at so we'll speed it up a little bit to get get past it and you can see where things went wrong i think even if i bombed the tiana i don't know that i would have uh i would have been okay because the oki would have played about the same so you know it happens most Okies die. That one didn't. So what are you going to do? All right. Moving on. We're sitting at four and one. Pretty good little run. This team can go on really bad streaks too, like 0 and 5. All right. We get a G2. Yay, G2. Why do I like G2s? That's a good question. Um, they give you more points and they can't hurt you on points. When you're under 1900, they can't really mess with you and you can really mess with them. So no, no G2 wants to pull a C3. It's just not fun. Um, looking at the draft, he started with Bastet, so I knew we were going to play the speed game. So I went with uh, Sierra Draco. That's my next best option. He went with Verd, which I generally assume is going to be fast. And the Elsharian, which is that weird team that people play. So I go with Megan Kali. He goes with Garo Raouk. Raouk. 
and then I go with Covenant because I see three fire, right? Covenant again. Um, the bans are pretty obvious, I think, the speed leads. Let's see if he does. No, he bans the Covenant. So he's betting that he's faster with my speed lead or he can tank through the Sierra uh, Kali. I'm banning the Garo because I know that the Garo Verd is going to be his his route to going first. Um, and there's no, there's no speed lead for that Bastet. So all I got to do is outspeed the Bastet. And I know my uh, Draco can outspeed a Bastet. I, I know for sure my Sierra Draco can outspeed a Bastet. So we'll see. So I'm feeling good. I'm going first. I got Kali. I got Sierra. Let's do it. So another bit of threat assessment I do at the beginning of matches with this team or any team is look at who has will. So Bastet here is my primo target for Sierra bombs. I don't even have to remove buffs. I can just do it. But I elect to remove buffs anyway. That was a big mistake. Let's look at that. Look at my look at my attack buffs. Kali doesn't have attack buff. Sierra doesn't have attack buff. That's not a winning strategy for me. Um, they have to have attack buffs for them to kill things. So I made an error there. <clears throat> and then I hit Verd, and I'm like, why didn't Verd die? Because in the moment, I didn't realize that they didn't have attack buffs. I just was bebopping along, like not even paying attention. Um, and I should have known I needed attack buff to kill Verd. So I'm in big trouble here, in my opinion. We do bomb the Rauk, and this is where we get really lucky. Look at that crit on Bird. We crit wind to fire to get the kill and luck ourselves out of our giant mistake. Um, we get the Rauk, we get a proc, and now we're doing really nice. A little bit of luck after followed by a little bit of uh, foolishness, but sometimes that's how it goes. And I'm feeling pretty good here. The Elsharian hit like a crazy tank, but one defense break is all it took to bring him down. So we, we kill a G2. In theory, if you're going to be G1, you're going to have to kill at least one G2 at some point and probably lots of g1s and maybe a g3 now and again so we've got a c3 pretty far uh, below me let's take a look at the draft here and i believe that makes us five and one yeah okay so sierra first pick they pick kind of a speedy team with the fran lauren lauren's everywhere now not a problem for cleave um huge problem for teams that take a lot of turns because lauren just sticks around and does horrible things um I follow up with Bastet Odin, which seems reasonable into those two. He goes with the really nice Diana, Verd. Verd, not so much, but the Diana, really nice. So then I'm like, okay, cool. I can take my base five team. No problem. He's not threatening speed after four picks, right? He has one mediocre speed lead. He has no boosters. The Verd might be fast, but not really that worried about it. Um, and so then I just go, okay, I'm going to go Kali Megan. No big deal. He goes with Hathor as his last pick, which is fantastic. I love Hathors because um, I just murder them. And I'm feeling really good about this match going in. I know I can ban the Diana and have lots of targets I like to kill. Dianas in general um, are tanky to the point of maybe I can't one-shot them. And that's that's annoying because they can kill my team really quick. And we don't even get to play it, he knows, which is great. Not having to play is the best RNG because you nothing can go wrong when you don't have to push any buttons. So we're sitting at 6 and 1. Moving right along. Is this the, the G3? There's one G3 in here. Nope, this is not G3. It's still above me, though. So he opens Vanessa. I'm saying, okay, I'm going to open my normal way. And he goes Daphnis Pony. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll just do uh, Megan Collie. You know, just do my normal thing. And he goes Garo Triana. And I finish with the Odin. My normal five against his normal five. I'm going to ban the Vanessa. And we'll take our chances with everything else. As per usual, Vanessas are a real problem. Oh, I don't, oh, I totally forgot about that. Okay, this is the one where I banned the Triana because I faced a couple of Trianas that are Nemesis and super tanky, like triple HP. Triana can get away with that due to her base stats. And for some reason, I thought, there's no way that Daphnis outspeeds me, which is probably true. Um, to build a Daphnis full uh, damage like you need to, you can't get it over 300. Maybe one or two people in the world can or would want to. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll ban the Triana. I'll kill the Vanessa. And then I'll go down the line from there, which judging by the speeds, that was a good choice. Let's see how it plays out. We boost. That was important. We remove buff on the Daphnis because he's my second kill target. We murder, we murder, and now we're in the four on two. Here comes the counter murder. Hitting pretty good on the Ciara. You know Ciara's not long for this world against the Diana Garrow. Oh, he goes for the stun of the Kali. Smart, I guess, you know, not bad. Get a really nice dense break, uh, water to wind with the Bastet to Diana. So that was definitely lucky, which allows me to start nuking pretty good for real. That would not have been possible had I not uh, gotten that defense break. So that was a little bit of luck on my turn. Nice little finish off. And now we're, we're fine. The Garrow is not going to be able to heal enough against double water once Kali's down um, that Megan and uh, Bastet will be able to just kill it. 
he goes oh because yeah she's invincible which is a nice little invincible there and we know we're just chilling until we can kill it we kill it we're done we are seven and one moving on this is over a span of about a week you can see the the timeline there it's like six days something like that so not too shabby we've got trauma great trauma great this is characteristic of a c2 match it's a little bit of everything except a plan right a lot of c2s they've got the units they're a little lacking on runes they know generally what units are good but they don't have any uh any solid plan to put them together so looking at this draft it's kind of a mess it's all over the place it's not double immunity it's one immunity it's a good damage dealer in uh, ethna against my team but then the double fire didn't really end up helping him because i'm triple water so I feel like this is a pretty easy win, and I think the Ariel is generally a dead pick. I don't think Ariel brings anything to RTA currently. So I ban the Vanessa as per usual. I've got two juicy kill targets, and it's time to get killing. The only thing that can mess me up would be a Antares cut with some nice stuns. So we murder Antares, we're feeling good, we murder that, we're done. Like, done. That's easy mode. Didn't even pick any counter picks, which is great. He had a, had a plan to go first with the Wusa, but it stalled out after that right all right let's check this one out here so rule of thumb for g3s for me they are fast they are quick 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 um so i almost always play the speed game against g3s regardless of what i what they show um they've got weird stuff going on quick fast evil um so i'm like whatever i'm not gonna mess with it. i'm gonna go with my speed team garrow draco i know i'm going first and we'll let the cards fall where they may right he brings a bunch of stuff that i feel comfortable killing um but you know, we'll see. So I guess we're eight and one after that last match. Eight and one. All right, so we get first turn. Let's take a look at the attack bars here when we get a second. Okay, so after that buff, look at that Okeanos, really nice and fast. Everything else pretty slow, which is good. That's good for us. Missed the bomb. That's probably game. Land that bomb, kill Okeanos, move on feeling good, but missing that bomb is bad news. So then I'm like, oh, I'll go for a Lucia because I don't know. She seems like something I can kill. And I get a couple nice little cracks on her. I maybe should have gone for Okeanos. That may have been greedy. I should have maybe gone for the stun. Um, but you know, G3, got to be greedy. They are, you know they outrune you, right? You can't, you can't stick around. They're going to, they're going to outlast you on nice runes, in my opinion. All right, so we're looking pretty bad here. Garrow's looking pretty sad. Um, he's got nice multi-hits. Garrow's down and that's, that's game. So that's eight and two. Lose to the G3, I would have really liked to see, had I been able to take out that Okeanos turn one, what the game would have looked like. It would have been tight, but I think I have a decent chance there. I really do. Speed it up a little more. All right, so now we're moving on to another C3, fairly low beneath me. Daphnis first pick. Makes you wonder, makes you wonder. Like, is Daphnis just massively like contested in his world? It's so weird. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this. So I go with my standard team, except Covenant instead of Odin, which is debatable, probably against this team not great since he ended up being into Lucian and uh, the Leo there. But I ban his speed lead, whatever that thing is, that light bird. Gets the attack bar decrease, which I was like, oh man. But look, I'm no, I'm on no will, because, you know, that's how I roll. So it ended up working great here, because the Gianna gets no stun. She gets a bomb, which is, you know, an issue in two turns, but not yet. Kali this time is gonna say boom don't need don't need no buffs because Gianna loves buffs we're just gonna kill you without buffs Covenant says boom don't need no buffs and then we bomb the bomber we turn the tables on old miss bomb she gets an additional turn gets another bomb off a little bit lucky there um for the additional turn to get another bomb I think I was more ahead than this looks like because now he dies Sierra gets one more lick in and we're th three on two briefly Sierra's gonna blow up here there she goes and we're two on one but we tectonic shift into the win we are nine and two all right let's see what we get here hey a g1 pretty high g1 1994 he's where i'd like to be in a little while if i keep working on it all right so he's running kind of a japanese cleave with the speed lead in sierra um so I he takes the CRR, so I'm like, I gotta contest speed. So I use the Garrow to do that. A little nervous only having one speed lead, but I feel comfortable where my speeds are at. I know I'm going first. Um regardless, right? If I ban this here, I'm going first. So that's nice. Going first with two nuker nukers, I'm probably in good shape. We whistle. 
I checked the buffs. I've got attack buff on both my monsters, which is fantastic. Don't need to do what I'm doing here with uh, Bastet. Maybe I should have gone for the defense break on the single unit, but I was thinking in my mind, the shield will be good. I'll kill that bird thing, and then we'll just see if the shield protects me against Perna. That was my thought process. We murder that. We murder that. And now we're feeling good here because our big nuker is water. It's always unfortunate when they one-shot uh, Kali, but there's nothing that can prevent it. I don't have a Kali with 17,000 health, so she's just going to die. We're going to focus the Perna because the Perna is the real threat um, and the healer that can't heal itself. So we're just going to focus down the Perna, hope for the best. They're glancing. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And they just like, whatever. I'm not going to deal with that covenant. So we are 10 and 2. Luckily, I remember the last match in this string is fantastic. This might be it, actually. Let's see here. Can't remember. Yeah, this is it. It's that Gianna. That Gianna. I remember that Gianna. I remember this match. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, no, we can just go into it. I was going to break down the picks. So just like before, go first, hit hard, try to win. That's my plan. The Megan is usually pretty good, unless they have shield, because she only removes one buff. Um, shield will messes her up a little bit, because it's a 50-50, but not, not the worst odds in the world. So we buff up, and then we bu we block because we got to get a kill, right? So we got to we got to pick our targets. Um, got to kill, got to kill Tia Triana, right? That has to happen. If that doesn't happen, I lose. That's okay. You know they built it the right way. They have a counter. Good for them, right? We give it our best shot, and then we pick our second target. I feel like the water monkey was my biggest issue because he could control while he murders me. Um, they're all good targets. If I went after the Gianna. Um, I'd, I'd less likely to be stunned. I wouldn't get bombed. Water monkey, eh, I don't know. Maybe not a threat against Ciara. I don't know if that was the correct choice. That's debatable. I'm still not sure. And even the uh, red Ganny is a decent target. So we do get lucky there. We kill. We get the bomb. And now we're four on two. Feeling great. Here comes Gianna doing her thing. She only gets three stunned, which is great. He misses the defense break. But it's Kali, so, you know, I, gosh, I need a better one. I would love a Daphnis, actually. I think a Daphnis would be a great Kali substitute for my team because it's the same thing, but it doesn't die. And it does a little bit more, a little bit more um, with the one-turn reset and, you know, maybe an Oberon. Oberon would be good, too. So, you know, let's see what we can do about that comp to us, huh? So there's some questionable choices in the rest of this match. I'm not 100% sure in my decisions because we're looking at Two on two, and that nice shield from, uh, what's his name? Daphnis, right? So we're working on that shield. It is a big old shield. He doesn't get enough damage there, which is great. He does get the flat damage, which is frustrating. I don't want flat damage. She misses a bomb. Lucky for me, I removed the shield with the buff removal of Megan. That was huge for me. So we finish off with the kill. Now, here's where I'm not sure. I would, I would want to revisit this uh, line of choices. I make the decision to keep buffing with both buffers, assuming that the buffs help me more then the stuns hurt me and i think that might be incorrect because we get two attack buff turns but then we lose two turns I'm just gonna watch this little sequence so now we get another attack buff turn coming up and if i'm gonna buff one i might as well buff both so see she gets one turn of not nuking me down so i'm gonna get two attack buff turns into her here one two is that enough probably not because now i lose two turns so I, I'm, I'm not using my unit in turn advantage, I think, optimally. I think it would be smarter to not let her stun me and just keep wailing on her. And also, she misses a lot of bombs. See that resist? She misses a lot of bombs. Not that that one hurts, because I think, yeah, that one bomb kills Bastet anyway. But still, you, you know, she don't want to miss bombs. They're hard to build. You know, you got to have enough accuracy. You got to have speed. It's on violent. Like, you got to do all kinds of things. This is a great ending. Misses another bomb. Misses, misses, misses. Well, look at that. Is this not the best? This is the best ending. And boom, we summon a crow, and that's the match that brings us to uh, G1. So there's there's where we sit right now. It was crazy how big one win over the line bumped you safely in like 200 slots. Everyone's sitting right on the line because they like the red star, but they don't want to actually play, uh, which I can't fault them for. So played 102 more matches than last season, the most matches I've ever played. Most of them were early in the season. I think we finished this string at 11 and 2, which is, that's great. If I can keep going 11 and 2, I'll have no problem getting G1. It's just, you know, that probably won't happen because I'll actually have to play uh, G1s and G2s who, you know, have a plan. So that's where we're sitting right now. 54%, 217, and 185. Okay. Let's see here. My plan was to show you runes. Yeah. So we'll get rid of the video and we'll bring up the old account. 
So we've got a lot going on. Here's the Megan. She is uh she's a quick quick little lady. She's sitting at uh what 291. Pretty fast for a Megan. The accuracy is low. I could bump it up a little bit, and I think I probably will. Um, but I made a few adjustments for free removal. Here's the Bastet. She is also uh, on the quick side, 302. But if you're fighting me, you know, she's like 310, so don't worry about it. Just like, you know, hold on, we can just, can we just, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's an eight. You can see it, plus 208, hold on, there you go. So yeah, she's 207, um, so pretty fast. You probably can't outspeed her, so I wouldn't try. Just let her, let her do her thing, it's all good. Um, other units, notable units, we got the Covenant here. I mean, you know, pretty beefy, nice attack, crit. The main thing I worked on this rune removal was uh, speeding up the damage units. Here you can see my sad skill ups. Waiting for that HOH to get that 25%. He hits really hard now. He hits harder than any of my other single target nukers, and he can hit for like three more K when he gets this skill up. I can't devil him, and I won't. I won't. So I gotta get I gotta get that HOH or you know some some sniper pulls. I put everything into him. I don't care. Red snipers, yellow snipers. If they're a sniper, they're gone. Get him out. Um, so that's Covenant. Let's see here. Here's Draco. He is skilled up, and he's also a fast little guy, like 205, something like that. 305, excuse me. So booking it. He's booking it. Um, here's the Kali. She's pretty quick. 236. There's all the stats. Swift Blade. And who else? Oh, yeah, Garrow. Garrow's just a little monster. Look at those stats. He's a beast. Vamp Nem. There's my little rune that I uh, I reapped. But yeah, he's a, he's a little beast. Hitting real hard, which is great. He can one-shot a lot of stuff. Like, it's kind of scary what he does at the end of matches. He's definitely carried me through my own bad decisions on multiple instances. It's like, oh, good. I made mistakes, but Garo is Garo, so yay, that's great. Kind of gives you the feeling of a uh, maybe what a ragdoll owner would feel, you know, when the ragdoll clearly carries them through issues, whatever issues they might have uh, stumbled into. So Garo can sometimes give you, give you that feeling, that sweet, sweet ragdoll feeling. All right, Sierra is a monster in terms of damage. Um, she's well over 3,000 attack. 229 speed, 82% accuracy. I think I should grind that if I ever get the right grind, but I don't have it. So, yeah. I'd like to get her actually a little faster. I don't know if that's possible. I'll work on that uh, coming up. The only goal is everyone is faster than Odin. Odin has to be last out of everybody because he follows up the first kill with uh, the second kill. You know, all things going well. He's on a shield set. I had him on a will set last time around. And I think, I don't think it matters at all. It's, my sets don't matter. I'm just trying to do things quickly. So that's everybody. And then there's other monsters that I don't use. She's still in a good set. She's 264, Violent Will. Um, but yeah, so that's the that's the runes. Those are the units. That's what I do. And it goes great. I'm enjoying it. It's a really fun way to play. It puts all the RNG into the beginning of the match and then puts the enemy on the defensive in a way, like with their picks especially. So they'll dig into the monster pool that they're not used to, they're not comfortable with, they're more likely to make mistakes. They're more likely to be under ruined, right? Oh, I'm going to dig out that one monster I think is a counter that I never play. And hey, surprise, surprise, it's not uh, efficiently ruined, right? So that's kind of nice. You kind of push them into either outright mistakes in the pick because they, they can't make mistakes in the play. There's no mistakes. It's they kill my units that are squishy, right? There's no way to make a mistake on the play. Maybe a little bit, but not really. Um, so you, you force them into mistakes on the picks and then you just make their runes, uh, you know, put up or shut up. You know, put the runes to the test. Can they fight off a super fast cleave? And, you know, out of 13 chances, 11 people, I guess we went 12 and 2, right? Out of 14 chances, 12 people couldn't, which is great for me. Uh, so that's the plan. That's what we're doing this season. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We will see if we can't finish G1. I kind of think the dragon skins are gross. Like, they're not attractive to me this time around. So I'm not stressing. And my Varad already has, which I think is the best skin. So he's good. The only one that doesn't have a skin that might want one is this little guy here because I don't have Zyros. So he might he might be worth pushing for, but I'm not going to kill myself if I, if I don't get it. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I will catch you in the next one and uh, take care, everybody.